Badger Brewery, Thirsty Ferret, Amber Ale. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. One today from the Badger Brewery. And I've tried a few of their beers and this one has escaped me until today. I was in Morrison's mooching about looking at the beer aisle. They have got some shit for sale in there for Christmas. They've got boxes and boxes of, of that fucking abomination. What is it? Madry Exceptional. What a of shit that is. That's Dora. That little fucker, she is turning into a nightmare. Not only... As she'd gone through the laundry basket, chewing through underwear and socks. I caught her today. There's a big electric cable coming from one of the extension cables here. She was biting on that. Luckily, I caught her in time. Honestly, you've got to have eyes in the back of your fucking head with that dog. Anyway, enough about that. Percy, the little fucker, he ate a pound of butter. Literally, got up on the side, he ate a pound of butter. Don't know when he done it but he did it. I came out and the butter dish was clean and I thought it was odd and I saw him looking sheepish and then he threw it all up again. And then all three of them dived in to try and eat it. Honestly, these fuckers are disgusting and that is why I don't let him lick me because fuck knows what goes on behind closed doors. And he's here trying to act all innocent, isn't you, mate? Oi, talking about you. He wouldn't look at me yesterday, would you? Because you knew what you did. You ate a pound of butter, you little git, didn't you? Eh? No fucks given whatsoever. I'm not getting too close to him because he threw up in the garden today and I had to drag him back from fucking eating it. What is wrong with these fuckers? They have no fucking shame whatsoever. Anyway, thirsty ferret, that's what you're here for, isn't it? Not to hear about Percy's tales of puking and chundering. Uh, this is from the Badger Brewery. They've been going since 1777. They're quite, well, i say over 240 years old. And they're, uh, I would say, a, a little bit of a hit and miss brewery. Now, they do some good beer. The Tanglefoot, I quite like. I think that's a great beer. I'm gonna put him down because he's slipping off anyway. Oh, there you go. Uh, they do some absolute abominations. The Blandford Fly is some kind of ginger beer concoction it is fucking rancid that went down the sink the cranbourne poacher i actually used to like when i first started reviewing beer it was one of my go-to beers i really liked it and then i stopped drinking it when i got into other beers and i revisited it the review is on the channel and i have to say it really wasn't nice at all so it just goes to show how deceptive your palate can be and i always encourage people who watch these videos of mine to try as many beers as possible not only does it make you realise which is good beer and which is bad beer, but it also helps you differentiate between the various styles. What some people may think is very flavourful beer can, in the grand scheme of things, not be that flavourful at all. And, you know, some beers that people actually really like, if they get to taste top quality beer and then revisit it, you, you could find that there are some things in there that you previously liked that you actually don't like now that you've tasted other beers. Convoluted, I know, but it is a fact, certainly for me anyway, that's my experience of tasting the, the various beers. Anyway, I'm rambling. As I say, these have been going since 7077. Their beers can be good. As I say, the, the Tangled Foot that they do is quite nice. They do one called Twice Tangled as well, which looks really interesting. I can't find that anywhere. But a viewer asked me, um, had I reviewed Thirsty Ferret? And I thought I had, but I haven't. And this is me reviewing it now. Now they've got it down as an amber ale. And my previous take on this was that amber ale was an American thing. It was the it was the catch-all term for English style ales, including bitters as well. However, they do a best bitter as well. Badger do a best bitter. I've not had that. I don't know whether that's available in bottles or not. I've not seen it. But uh, th this is their amber ale. Now, 
you can argue what amber ale is. It's just a descriptor of the colour. I don't think there is a specific style that is associated with amber ale. It could be English ale. It could be it could be a bitter. Who knows? But it's a bit ambiguous. Doesn't really bother me because there are some great ones out there. The, the uh, Bath Ale's Gem is an amber ale, classed as an amber ale. That's a really good beer. I really did like that. So I'm wondering whether this is going to be just as good. Now, Bath Ale's are quite a new brewery, but this lot have been going for years. So it will be interesting to see how over 240 years of experience compares to 20 odd years of experience. So without further ado, let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Right, firstly, ferret, 440 mil, 440ml, uh, 4.4% 4 .4 volume. The cask is 4.1. Uh, it's a 500ml bottle. Uh, on the back it says, ferret comes from the Latin word for little thief. When they're about, you can be sure troubles brewing. We still remember the night. One such furry ne'er-do-well tiptoed into the thatched gribble in. The thatched gribbled in. That sounds like a right fucking stay on the roads, dog on the moors type pub, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and made himself a taste, and made for, made, oh, fucking hell, read it properly. And stole himself a taste of our tantalizing tawny tipple, loved for its full-bodied biscuity tastes. Now then, what's little thief, what's Latin for little thief with great tasting beer? And this description is uh, a Morris, a Morrisley Malty Amber Ale, dark crystal malt, delivers a full-bodied biscuity uh, taste, rounded off with subtle floral and lemon hop aroma. Doesn't give me any indication of what the hops are in here, unfortunately, which is a shame, but that's about it, really. Crystal malt, as you know, it's rare that I have ta I taste English beers, and I think you will only find crystal malt, or it being labelled as crystal malt, in English beer, I've not seen it in any other Belgian beer, I've not seen it in German beer or, or Czech beer for that matter either. But it usually means that there's gonna be a nice sweet backbone on a beer that contains crystal malt because crystal, as the name would suggest, is taken from when the malt germinates and it produces sugar and the, the shoots that have germinated, they are killed off in the kiln and the sugar is left and that crystallizes with the heat and it goes into the, the boil and it does give for a nice sweet seam running through beers with that in there. There you go. I'm fucking knackered. Let's have a beer. Right, let's get it open. There is ye oldy cap. If you can see that, it's got a picture of a badger on it, which is unusual considering the brewery is called Badger Brewery. Let's get a little bit in the glass, see what is going on. I don't know how clean this glass is. Um, not too clean by the fucking looks of it. That is a disgrace. It's a fucking disgrace, you fucking bastards. What have we got in the nose? Hmm, not bad. There is a distinct caramel malt aroma coming from that. And there's some bitter, what I'm perceiving as being a bitter, grassy type aroma. But there's definite caramel malt coming from that too. Doesn't smell that bad actually. Aromas are slightly faint, or is it because I may have the start of a cold coming on? Who knows? Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't smell too bad. Nice, uh, nice bitter aroma on there as well. Um, lacing on the glass, a little bit. Head, foamy white head on there. Um, yeah, doesn't look too bad. Let's give it a go. Bottoms up. Oh, quite nice. Oh, and there's that biscuity finish that they're talking about. Oh, it's big. That's a big finish on that. And that isn't bad. That is not bad at all, I have to say. There is a distinct 
English style hop flavor coming from that. And it's very, very floral, as it says on there, it's very floral. Um, I'd am imagining that's a type of Fuggles hop and there's a slight element of fruit on there as well, but it isn't bad at all. The big standout for me on this is that biscuity malt finish. Now, they're saying it's biscuit. There is a digestive biscuit out there that's got a layer of caramel on it. I'm sort of getting that type of taste off the finish. Now, it's not as sweet, obviously, because them fucking digestives are packed full of sugar and all sorts of fucking nonsense, but I do get elements of caramel on there as well. And I have to say, it's quite nice. I'm just trying to get some more of them aromas. Yeah, very nice. It's, it's like a, a, a sort of a caramel malt, but very floral and slightly spicy aromas coming from there too. This isn't bad. This is reminding me a bit of the, the Tanglefoot. This had that Moorishly big malty finish on it. Very, very easy drinking. This is the perfect temperature. This is what I would expect to be served up in a quality pub, the temperature of the beer. This is the perfect cellar temperature. Now I went down to Morrison's this afternoon, that has been in the fridge for about three quarters of an hour and it is just the right temperature. It is freezing outside, but it's quite warm in this room because I've got the heating on. Look at that, that even looks like a good pint as well, doesn't it? Yeah, really liking this. Yeah, it's a good one. Very Moorish, very drinkable. Sessionable at 4.4%. I'm struggling to find anything that I really don't like about this beer. That is definitely gonna, mm, that was quite nice. Uh, th this is definitely going to go down as one to to pick up when I'm on the on a trolley dash down in Morrison's. Now I've seen this sitting on the shelves for quite a long time, just like I did see the um, the gem from the Bath Ales Brewery, and I have to say, I wish I'd have tried this sooner. What's put me off is I've tried, as I say, I've tried a couple of the um, Badger Brewery beers and. Some have been okay, as I say, Tanglefoot. They don't have that in Morrison's at the moment, but they've got this. This is gonna go down on the list as being one to pick up, as is the, well, it always is. I've got two in there at the moment. The Timothy Taylor Bolt Maker and the Timothy Taylor Landlord, two fantastic beers. Uh, this is another one. Hook Norton Old Hooky is another one. Old Peculiar is another one. It, I have to say, whoever's buying the beer for Morrison's really does know their stuff, and I really am spoiled for choice because they do the Black Cab Stout, they do the West Indies Porter, if ever I wanted uh, a decent porter. They've got St. Peter's Plum Porter. They've got the, uh, in terms of like Amber Ale, they've got this, they've got the uh, Gem from the Bath Ales uh, Company, and I'm sure they've got a couple of others dotted about there. They've got some nice pale ales in there, the Timothy Taylor Landlord Pale Ale. They've also got the Sussex uh, Brewery uh, Pale Ale, which is nice. So yeah, I have to say, whoever's buying the beer for Morrison's, I'll take my hat off to you. Because, well, I'm not literally gonna take my hat off, because then and you see the old ink on my head, so I'm trying to keep that covered up, because, uh, yeah, it's put a lot of people off. I've had a few people uh, message me and saying, um, what the fuck's going on with the tattoos on your head? Why the fuck would you do that? Why would you ruin your life? And, what, what the fuck has it got to do with you? Really, some of the hate I get through emails and stuff, so you know, saying, "Oh, you, you know, why have you? You'll never get a job and shit like that." Fuck off! I am not interested in your opinion. Anyway, never mind that. We're talking about the beer. I'm going to have one more final mouthful, give you my opinion, and then we get on the next section. Yeah, the perfect pint. I'm loving it. 
the perfect temperature, the perfect mouthfeel, the perfect body on it. Um, really nice, big biscuit malt finish, as they say on there, and it is Moorish. It does make you want to drink more. 4.4%, very nice ABV if you want to have a few. I'm not going to get you too rat assed and you can drink a fair amount of them. I am really struggling to find anything bad about this beer. It's got some nice English hop character on there, some nice floral notes. Um, a little bit of fruit, but it's not big. This is all about the malt, the sweet malt, the biscuit malt, and the caramel malt that you get on there. I have to say, on the palate, it's more caramel malt. The finish is big biscuit. But it's nice. It really is a good one. And that is going to go down on my list when I'm in Morrison's. So what is the verdict on the Thirsty Ferret Amber Ale from the Badger Brewery? Uh, yes, I wish I'd have picked this up sooner. And I, I think what was putting me off, as I said, mentioned in the previous section, was the fact that the the Badger Brewery do some, I will say subpar beers, the Blandford Fly and the Cranbourne Poacher, I have to say, you know, I did initially, if you look at my very, very old reviews from 2019, I, I was raving how good it was and then I revisited it recently and I remember thinking, Christ, this is not good at all. Now, I'm not going to say that Badger have changed the recipe. I, I'm going to say that it's my palate has been expanded and in the grand scheme of things, that is not a fantastic beer. But this, this can hold its, its own against most other amber ales, I think, and uh, I don't know whether it's worth doing a comparison with the... Uh, the Bath Ales gem, they're two great beers. I think it's I think it's on a par with them, but really nice. I mean, if you want to categorise amber ale, I would I wouldn't call this an amber ale. I think they've only done that because it's got got the amber colouring on it. Surprisingly, well done, fucking Colombo. But I I would sort of class this just as an English ale personally. That to me is what you would expect to. You know, if you were a tourist, American tourist, and you wanted a a pint of a pint of England, basically, that would fit the bill very nicely indeed. I'm really impressed with that, and uh, I'm going to give that a nine out of ten. I was sort of toying with the idea. Wow, that crystal malt! You really can get that sweetness in there. That is so good. That really is good. Um, I was toying with the idea when I was when I was tasting it. I'm not going to give it an eight and a half, but I think that is definitely worth a nine. Um, I'm not going to give it a ten because I think there potentially are better ones out there. I would probably have to do a head-to-head -head with the um, the Bath Ales gem if I was going to do it. I'm 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 sitting here thinking, do I really want to do that? Um, I might do if there's enough interest and you 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 want to you you want to have a head-to-head. -head. But th there's a caveat on this as well, and I'm always conscious of this when I do my reviews. This, this lot are based in Dorset, which is the deep south, basically. I mean, it's it's on the south coast. If you look directly at the bottom of the United Kingdom, you will find it more or less in the middle. You will find Dorset. Now, I'm not sure how available this is going to be further up north. And I'm talking as if it's widely available. There may be northern viewers who perhaps haven't seen this before or are just not familiar with the Badger Brewery. It's understandable. I don't know how big their distribution is. And I have found with these supermarkets, they tend to do, rightly so as well, they tend to do local-ish breweries. So you may not be able to find this up north, but if you do, I urge you to try some of this. Or the Tanglefoot as well. The Tanglefoot they do is a really nice one. But yeah, that's two beers that are worth checking out from the Badger Brewery. And remember, beer is working class champagne.